They're so cute. guys and welcome back to my channel if you're anything like me you've probably been scouring the internet looking for tips and tricks to save money at Disney World and I can honestly say I have been there this is honestly becoming a hodgepodge channel that's okay welcome anyway I keep hitting this and I don't like it Ooh, we good there's already tons of videos out here on YouTube and the internet in general about how to save money at Disney, but all of them are kind of like tips and tricks and that's for a good reason. There's really no way to save a ton of money at Disney World because Disney is expensive. There are some little shortcuts you can take, there's little odd things that you can do here and there, but it's nothing really you can do to take the comma out of the situation if you get what I mean you're gonna be spending somewhere in the thousands. It's gonna happen. Um, if you're lucky, you can maybe spend on the lower end of the thousands, and that's what I'm gonna help you guys do with these tips. Okay, so I have my tips in front of me. I wrote down 10 tips, and I'll give a brief explanation of why these tips work or why they may be useful to you um so i have it in front of me so if you guys see me look down and read a little bit that's what i'm doing i'm trying to make sure that this video is as structured as possible without too much of that you need to stop doing so much of this and do a little bit of that huh huh <laughs> let's get started step number one to save money at disney is book during off season now i use the term off season lightly because there really is not an off season. It stays busy 365 every day of the year. But you can expect smaller crowds between January and March, and then also at the beginning of September when everyone starts to go back to school. That's when the crowds will be smaller. So step number two. A lot of people don't know this, but you can actually bring food into the Disney parks. You can't bring glass and you can't bring alcohol, but you can bring food. You can bring whatever you like to eat or drink. You can pack it in a bag, maybe a small cooler. A lot of people don't know that they can do that. And um, if you want to avoid buying snacks and food inside the park, which I can honestly tell you is very hard to do because they even blow, I believe, scents of like vanilla throughout the park to make you hungry. I think that's how they do it. This is not me just talking, they actually do this. So it's really hard to avoid the food, but maybe if you bring in lunch or a snack, you can go to dinner inside the parks or vice versa, you can switch it up. That can save you a lot of money because as you know, not only are the parks expensive, but the food inside them are expensive as well. Step number three is buy your souvenirs ahead of time. Souvenirs are much cheaper if you buy them before you get anywhere near Disney. Once you get to those parks, you're gonna be paying astronomical price for souvenirs. And to avoid that, you can actually pack your souvenirs in your bag before you go, especially if you have kids. They're gonna see a lot of things. They're gonna see toys, things that light up, Disney um, merchandise. You can pack that take it to the parks and when they start to ask for it, you just whip it out of your bag and be like, oh look, look what I got you. I got this for you while you were on the ride or I got this for you when you weren't looking or I got this for you before we came. I don't know. I'm gonna show you guys. These next few clips prove that you can find Disney products almost anywhere. We're starting off here at Walmart. This is the men's section. I found a ton of Disney shirts. Also, I highly recommend looking on Walmart's website. They have some great Disney items. This next store that we're in right now is Five and Below. I saw keychains, watches, stuffed animals. There are so many hidden gems in Five and Below. And of course, you're paying anything $5 and below. So this is the best place to go for more bang for your buck. They also had shirts. Although the largest shirt size that I saw was about a 2X, but a huge variety. Highly recommend going to this place before any other. 
Surprisingly enough, there was a lot of Frozen. So if you have small children, especially girls, you're gonna find a lot of great products here. And then Forman Mills, this was actually shocking. A great surprise to find things at Forman Mills. But I even saw this onesie, also saw some purses. I'm not actually sure if these could be purses or little kids lunch bags but they were super cute. And of course, you know I saw one in Frozen as well. So before you guys go to Disney World, buy these products at home because you're gonna be paying the top dollar, the highest price if you buy them in Disney. Okay, so number four is buy a rang poncho. I know this doesn't seem like it would be important, but it rains a lot. In, in Orlando and specifically it'll rain for short bursts and while you're inside the park people don't just people some people do take cover but for the most part people pull out their rain ponchos and they keep it moving they go to the next ride they get on the next thing meanwhile you could be somewhere taking cover and missing out on those rides depending on how long the rain lasts I got our rain poncho from Family Dollar, they sell them at Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, Dollar General. You can find rain ponchos. And I mean, it's it's just only a, a dollar. And you can just protect yourself from the rain because once you get down there, they do have rain ponchos, but they charge, I think roughly like $14 for one inside the park. So you can save a couple of bucks by packing it ahead of time and just having it like that you don't have to worry about it the rainy seasons that you should primarily look out for is anywhere between june and september that's their rainy season so step number five book during times there are no holidays this is a huge one if you are around easter christmas and even memorial day the tickets are going to be higher the crowds are going to be larger just don't do it no, unless you honestly want to go during those times. Maybe you're doing it as like a Christmas big, uh, present to the entire family. I understand it, but just know that you're going to be paying the highest price around those times. Um, another time is during anniversaries as well. In October, Disney will have its 50th anniversary that's coming up. Um, you're going to be paying some high prices around that time. Step number six is third party sites may have rooms for cheaper. So if you are booking through the Disney website, you see a hotel that you really like, I would suggest getting out of that site and going to look at third party sites to see if they have that exact same um, hotel, or let me say resort, that same Disney resort. See if they have it for a cheaper price. They may have it and after you book through that third party, your everything will link over in the Disney websites. Also consider um, looking into renting DVC points. This is going to go right along with step number six or tip number six. DVC points are stands for Disney Vacation Club points. This was something that I looked into but ultimately decided not to go through with because we found something that was much, much cheaper. But if staying on Disney property is important to you, I highly suggest that you research more about using, uh, or excuse me, renting DVC points. There are so many videos out there about how to do it. It's basically you buying points from someone who has a Disney timeshare, basically. In a nutshell, that's what you're doing. And you're paying a cheaper price but you may get actually a better room at maybe a preferred resort of your choice versus you booking directly through Disney. So consider researching DVC points if staying on Disney property is very important to you. That's gonna go right along with six. Step number seven <laughs> follows right, right behind six is stay off site. I don't know why this is controversial because there's a lot of people that do it and they don't advertise that they actually do it. Okay, I cannot stress tip number seven enough. Staying off site will save you hundreds of dollars. So staying on Disney property will cost you more money. Some ways to get around this is first of all, 
choose a good hotel that's actually near Disney World. There is a YouTube channel and it's called The Park Hop. This guy, I don't know his name, but the, the name of the channel is called The Park Hop and I'll put everything in the description box uh, below. He will go through the best cheap hotels within 15 minutes of Disney World and he rates them off their quality, amenities, and usually they are less than $75 a night. That is how I found the hotel that we're staying at. We are staying at Lake Buna, I wrote it down. Rosen Inn Lake Buena Vista is where we're staying at. It's less than five minutes away from Disney World. They have two pools. They are actually a Walt Disney World, um, what is it called? Good Neighbor Hotel. So that's another option for you. If you don't wanna pay the resort price and stay on site, you can always stay at a Walt Disney World Good Neighbor Hotel. And they have some type of connection or contract with Disney World for a better quality stay. So I'll put the link to that video below, but I found that video extremely helpful in deciding which hotels that were near the Disney World area that will work out for me. I chose a hotel that was not only a good neighbor hotel, but like I said, offers shuttles, free shuttles to and from the park, offers $300 for a five night stay. Yeah, I know, amazing. You guys can check out the reviews. It's called the Rosen and Lake Buena Vista. It's not bad at all. And for that price, it was. But I want to start off by saying a little information that you may already know. But Disney World consists of four parks in no specific order Epcot, Magic Kingdom, Hollywood, and Animal Kingdom. Cut out a park. Cut out a park. Yeah, I said it. Cut out a park. It's going to save you hundreds of dollars. You don't have to do this tip, but it worked out for us. For Specifically, it wasn't about the money. It was about our time that we would spend there. If we cut out Animal Kingdom, we could shift all our plans over by a day and then use Saturday to actually go to Universal Studios Orlando. And that's ultimately what we decided to do. But just so you can have the information, maybe you wanted to just do Disney World and only Disney World. Cutting out Animal Kingdom and just focusing on the remaining three parks will save you some money. It will. You might not even miss that, that park. This is our, excuse my handwriting, but this is my handwritten list of all the must do rides in each and every park. And of course, the list that came up the shortest was Animal Kingdom and that's how I made our decision. There were so many classic rides that I wanted to ride inside of Universal Studios Orlando that I made that decision and I cut out Animal Kingdom and replaced it with uh, Universal Studios Orlando. If you were just doing Disney and you know that Disney has four parks, consider what rides are the most important to you. One park doesn't have that many rides or seems to interest you that much Cut it out, just chuck it. And I know a lot of people are gonna get angry about that, but it, I'm being honest with you, that's what I did. People who go to Disney World or make a living out of Disney World will tell you how fast they get go through Animal Kingdom. There's not so much to do, and it's the smaller of the parks, of the four parks. Correct me if I'm wrong. Tip number nine is kinda weak, but I should throw it in there. Book your flight two to three months in advance. It has been researched that the best time to book your flight is two to three months in advance. Not too far ahead, too close to when it's time to leave. Two to three months is the sweet spot to book your flight. Consider not getting that park hopper option. When it comes time to go purchase your tickets through the Disney World website, they're gonna ask you if you would like to do the park hopper option where you can spend the majority of your time maybe at one park or split half your time at one park and then hop over to another park, which I would say would be worth the money at any other time. But right now with the pandemic, you can only park hop starting at 2 p.m. 
and there's no guarantee that that park won't reach capacity when you are ready to go to that next park. And I don't know about you guys, but if I'm spending that extra money, I wanna be guaranteed that I can actually travel to that park when I want to, as long as it's still open. I think Disney World is at 35% capacity right now because of the pandemic and everything that's happening. So keep that in mind. It may not be worth it. We decided to focus on one park per day and just forego the park hopper option. And that saved us hundreds. Number 11. If you buy Disney ears in the parks, you can be paying anywhere from 30 to 35 bucks online at the Disney website, online at the Disney store, you'll be paying $29.99. I want to show you guys my ears that I purchased from Amazon. I got both of these ears, they came together like this for $14, actually $13.99. That's how much I paid. And I'll link below where you can find these ears, the name of the seller. He came home while I was in the middle of filming this. But look. Oh, oh, the thing I'll see. Okay, I had to mute this last part out because I got a little crazy talking about the Disney pairs. I'm air ears. Oh my goodness. Oh. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Please leave comments and questions below. Bye. <laughs> I mean, this is the best 14 bucks I ever spent.